This is my Jenny project. It's a biplane, you know, for training in World War I, American trainer. It's going to be a three-fifth scale Jenny, which will carry two people just like the original, but it's quite a bit smaller airplane. Yeah, I've always been intrigued with biplanes. I always thought they were really cool. And then I read in a magazine this guy had built a Jenny and he'd flown it around and everything. And it turns out he, he published plans for it. You could build your own. And I was thinking about it. And then I saw this ad in a paper. A guy wanted to sell his project. He was in Oklahoma. So I talked to him on the phone. Took an airliner to Oklahoma City, rented a truck, and carried this project home. At that time, it didn't have top and it didn't have the landing gear, didn't have any of the control system. And so I got that far, and I built the tail. The tail is back at home. And the wings are partly started. And it's been languishing ever since we moved up here, too. I haven't got a damn thing done on it out there. But it's got to be a nice plane. It's got these big, big wheels so you can land it in unimproved, you know, dirt runways or not even a runway, because these are, these are Yamaha dirt bike wheels. <clears throat> and it's gonna have a, the engine out of a Geo Metro or a Chevy Sprint, which is a little aluminum 1,000cc uh, three-cylinder motor, which will work out just fine for this plane. They're popular to use in small home builds. This, this control stick here, you can see how this, both sticks work. This is the front seat, this is the back seat. The back seat is where the pilot sits. The front seat is where the passenger sits because you can fly with or without a passenger and it doesn't affect the center of gravity. If, if the pilot was in the front seat, if it was designed that way, when somebody got in the back seat, it would be a lot more tail heavy. So the, that's why a lot of these early planes were built that way. The original Jenny was made out of wood. This is steel, uh, chromolybdenum steel, and it's going to be covered in fabric. The wings are aluminum tubing and aluminum ribs. It's a water-cooled motor. It has a big, ra we have a big radiator right at the front. There's a hole in the radiator where the propeller shaft goes through. And I hope to get it done. I'm trying to focus on these things now that the kids are gone and uh, maybe I don't have quite so many distractions. My brother Joe called up and he said, hey, I know where you can get a boat really cheap probably. The story was his neighbor, who was a drug dealer, but he had two boats and a RV. And they caught him and took him to jail. The two boats and the RV were all sitting on the street. The RV got towed away, and then the, one, the other boat got towed away. And so Joe took it upon himself to take this boat and put it on a vacant lot next door to his house. And so he told me about it. So I ended up talking to the guy on the phone and I ended up paying 500 bucks for it, which was, was not a steal. <laughs> I brought it home, I had to do some repairs to the trailer. The windshield was all busted, kids have been jumping on it. Plexiglass windshield was all split and broken. So I made a new windshield out of plexiglass, heated it in the oven to curve it like this, and it turned out pretty good. That was about 10 years ago, I guess. We towed it up with the motorhome. And we've taken it to Lake Kachuma and the lakes around here and the Morro Bay and and it's, it's got a 65 horse Evinrude and it speeds around real good. It'll tow water skiers. I think they were using it for fishing. It had places where you can plug fishing poles into it. And I have a little trouble with the motor. It doesn't want to idle down. It, it'll die when it idles, which makes it a pain in the butt when you're trying to dock. But I just put new ignition coils on it last year. I haven't had it in the water since but maybe that'll fix it. I bought this Bimini cover, it's turquoise, to match the uh, eventual new paint job. It'll carry four people just fine. You can squeeze a couple more in too, if you want. It'll go 30 miles an hour. It didn't have, the speedometer was gone when I bought it. And I went 
I happened to be at the junkyard and there were some boats in the junkyard and one had a nice speedometer on it. It works good, other than the engine gives me a little trouble sometimes. We got a couple more boats, as you can see right there. There's a canoe we bought from a friend of ours and it's kind of fun to paddle around in. And on the other side of the plane is a, a flat bottom boat that I got from my sister Sally. And then I don't know if you can see the, see the soapbox derby racer. Yeah, me and Brian, uh, Brian Tesson, we built a pair of those. The Cub Scouts are racing soapbox derbies. Those are our claim to fame there. <laughs> Well, yeah, the reason I bought the Mooney, uh, we had a Cherokee 140 before that. I wanted to get a, an airplane that would carry a little more weight and climb a little better. And then my flight instructor, Jack Silva, he called me and said, hey, I know where there's this Mooney for sale, cheap. So I bought the Mooney. We were flying back from Lake Elsinore, I think it was, and the engine missed a beat. And I thought, oh no. And Rhonda was in the pilot seat. So I told her to climb, give it full power and climb. So we landed at Long Beach Airport with no problem. And it was a stuck valve. The engine was uh, due for an overhaul. So then we had a nice new engine. We flew it quite a bit. It was my birthday, actually. We were going up to the lake for our vacation. Well, the engine sounded a little funny. So we spent the night in, in the Bay Area. I didn't get a lot of sleep. And then in the morning, we went out and worked on the plane for a while, trying to get the engine to run right. And we decided it's running fine, but that had spent quite a few hours. We were intending to, to land at Evergreen Airport in, in Oregon before dark, but because we got delayed, it was after dark. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and land at Portland, and in the morning, we'll move the plane over. So I raised the landing gear and told Portland I wanted to land there. When I was coming in to land, the, the final check list you're supposed to use is GUMP, G-U-M-P. That stands for Gas Undercarriage Mixture Prop. It's got two indicator lights. The red light for the gear is up, green light for the gear is down. But in my old plane, the red wasn't red anymore. It's kind of a faded orange. Anyway, I looked at it. And it looked like the right color to me. I don't know, my brain wasn't working too good. I hadn't got good sleep last night. So anyway, we came on down and I slid in on the belly, which was bad news. Curled the propeller back and as soon as we skidded to a stop, uh, the fire truck came up and sprayed foam all over the place. And then the ambulance came and told us all get out of the plane. And we got into the ambulance and they took us over to the office. The, the cops separated Rhonda and me and, and interrogated us each individually. And then the FAA guy came up from McMinnville about two or three in the morning and he t interrogated us. So anyway, after they interrogated us, uh, we wanted to go, he wanted to go out and look at the plane. They'd gotten it off the runway to put it on a dolly. So we went out there and he wanted to see all the paperwork. You know, you, there's required papers you're always supposed to carry with the airplane. Aero, A-R-O-W, airworthiness, owner's certificate, radio station license, and weight and balance. Well, anyway, when we were packing up to go on the trip, we didn't, I didn't have room for it. Nobody's ever asked me for it in the 16 years I'd been flying. So I stuck it back in the car and didn't bring it with me. Well, that was the big mistake because without that, you know, I've told him that and he muttered something about disciplinary action. That night, I called up Veronica, our nanny, and had her one overnight ship that paperwork up to us. And so, and it was Saturday night when we had this. So Monday morning, I go into his office in McMinnville. I wanted to give all the paperwork to him. Hopefully that would help my case. Well, the secretary said, well, he'd just gone on vacation for two weeks. We got a, a new propeller shipped up from California and a guy, some mechanics came out from Salem and they bolted it on the plane and gave me a ferry permit. 
So I ferried the plane home. So Kathy and Andy and Rhonda, they all took the airliner home and I flew the Mooney home. They had me send in my license and so I don't have a license right now. I have to get it back. I'm in process of doing that. So in the meantime, uh, we, I had somebody else fly the Mooney up here when we moved. That was just when we were moving. It's when this all happened. So we got it up here. I took the engine off and put it in the back of my truck and drove it down to Gardenia and they tore the engine down and magnafluxed it and x-rayed it and everything and put it all back together. And so there was some belly work that needed to be done, you know, and new landing gear doors and stuff. And so I put those on. I'm just about done fixing it. And then I got to get it signed off and then it'll be able to fly again, hopefully pretty soon. It's been 20 years.